Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, as uh, part of my, my recent What's in the Box episode, we had a Yezu FT2500M that was sent in by KC1CCR. Thanks again, by the way. And uh, the microphone that came with it is a Yezu MH27. Now the radio works fine, but I had reports from some people that I talked to that the audio would be low. And uh, sometimes I'd have to talk right into the mic, directly into the mic with this right at my lips and talk loudly for them to, to say that my audio was fine. In doing some research, I discovered that this microphone has a known issue. It has an electrolytic capacitor in it that is part of the uh, capacitor apocalypse from uh, several years ago where uh, some bad electrolyte uh, led to millions of bad capacitors going into consumer gear all over the world and the electrolyte dries out and these capacitors basically turn into resistors and that's what's going on with this one there is a small surface mount 0.1 microfarad electrolytic capacitor that has dried up and turned into a resistor and it's not passing audio like it should now it's tiny it's a little surface mount case and I'll show you when I get this apart um, and I have some 0.1 microfarad electrolytics here that might be small enough to fit down in the space between the boards and if not I have a, another board out of an old tape deck that has a point one that's even smaller so we'll get this apart and I'll show you what you have to do to uh, get to the component and then we're going to replace it and uh, it's some very fine soldering so hopefully I can capture all that on camera uh, to take the microphone apart there are three screws on the back, one, two, and a third one up here in the uh, mic clip. So I'll get those apart and then the case clamshells off and I'll show you what's inside. So, stand by. Okay, this is the inside of the microphone. Now, this top PC board here is the board that has the bad capacitor on the other side of it. <laughs> there are little plastic clips that you can't see that hold the bottom board. On the bottom of this microphone there's a board where all the DTMF buttons are here. It's a flat contactor board. And then it is sandwiched to this board and you see these solder points across the back? This is a, a set of pin headers. There are pins that stick up from the bottom board that are soldered to this board. So all of those have to be desoldered and up here at the top, right here under these two wires, there are two more pin headers. It's another another set of pins up in there. I wonder if I can angle this so you can see it. Maybe not quite, but down inside there you can kind of see where there's pin headers. Hold on. Let's pull the up and down button. There we go. Now you can see it. See that? There's pins on the bottom board here and this little plastic shell that holds them and keeps them straight and the, the wires come right up and they go right through here so we have to desolder those two, we have to desolder all of these and then the uh, board will come away from the bottom board there's also one, two, three screws you position this right Kevin one, two, three screws so I'll take these three, three screws out, some solder wick to desolder these and those two, and then this board will come up away, and I can show you where the capacitor is. Okay, here is the board. I've taken it off. There's the other, other underside board, and you can see the pin headers here. And flipped it over, and there are one, two, three, four electrolytic capacitors here. This one out here the one that we're concerned with. Okay. I'll pull up the schematic and I'll show you the schematic. This is C5 right here. 0 0.1 microfarads at 50 volts. And that is the one that passes audio from the microphone element and that is probably our problem right there. So as you can see from the tip of this screwdriver, this is a tiny little bitty capacitor. <laughs> Fortunately, I have one that I think 
will fit in the space here. It's uh, about the same thickness as uh, what's in there and it's a point one so I'm going to desolder this guy with some solder wick and put this one in in place of it and with electrolytics you have to pay attention to polarity you can see this capacitor is marked I don't know if that shows up on the camera I think so where the white square is there's a minus in there and next to it is a plus so this trace here is the plus and that's the ground so I will pay attention to that and I will put the new capacitor in with the same polarity and then we'll put it all back together and hopefully that will solve the low audio problem. It's a well-known problem on this microphone, well documented on the web. Okay, that was some tricky soldering but as you can see this little cap is just sitting in here nice and clean. We've got it soldered to the two pads. Desoldering the old capacitor was pretty easy. <coughs> it's not a through-hole board they're flat pads and the pin just lays on the pad so all I, was ha all I had to do on, this ca on the capacitor I removed was put some solder braid against it and press against it with the tip of my soldering iron and as it melted the uh, solder it just popped the capacitor right loose and the braid cleaned the pads at the same time and then I was able to just touch the tip of the iron to the pads with a little bit of solder to freshen them and then I pre-bent the capacitor leads so that they laid flat against the pads when the capacitor was laying in there and I just kind of held it there with the pins pushing down on the pads and just pushed down with the tip of my iron a little bit and they uh, mel it melted the solder and they just you know took right to the pads. So let me turn this sideways and you can see that that capacitor is not as tall as this switch back here that clears inside the board so it's going to fit between those two boards just fine. So that should take care of my low audio problem. All I have to do now is put the boards back together and re-solder those header pins. Try to do this on camera so you can see it happen. So I'll line these up, get those pins lined up with the holes. There there. I can just press the boards together and those pins come right up through the holes. There we go. And there we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these screws back in because they will hold the boards together and, and keep the pins fully extended so I can solder them. Now with these screws that go into plastic, you don't want to over tighten them because you'll just chew up the plastic and then you'll never get them to screw down again. You just want to turn them until they stop and then just give them a little bit of a snug so that they're just in there. Alright, now I can re-solder these pins. And the way you do that, I don't know if I can get in close. No, I can't. Um, what I do is I put just a touch of solder on the very tip of the iron and then I'll put the tip of the iron on one side of the pin and I'll bring the solder in from the other side and I'll just flow it, bring the solder iron straight up and I should get a nice clean pyramid around the pin. And you got to be careful that you don't bridge between two of the pins or any adjacent components.
to do is put the microphone back together and uh, hook it up, talk to somebody, and make sure the audio is not low. So that's it. That's how you uh, replace that capacitor on the uh, MH27 microphone. Thanks for watching.